In 1937, the foreign population in the islands numbered 62,000, and it would swell by another 30,000 by the end of the decade. Micronesians, all 50,000 of them, had become a minority in their own islands. They brought in large number of Japanese. Uh, by 1940, the Japanese were outnumbering Micronesians, almost two to one. The economic machine that the Japanese administration had built churned out more and more each year. On a per capita basis, the tiny territory of Micronesia was far and away the most productive part of the Japanese overseas empire. Within 15 years of the occupation of Micronesia, they work miracle here, economic miracle here. The Micronesian economy was booming. But this development came at a price. Loss of land was part of that price. By the mid-1930s, the Japanese government owned twice as much land as the islanders themselves owned. All the while, Japanese nationalism was becoming ever more strident. Its militarism was distancing Japan from the world community. In September 1931, the Japanese army swept into Manchuria and forcibly annexed it. Then, in 1935, Japan withdrew from the League of Nations. Despite protests from other nations, Japan insisted on retaining its mandated territory. The South Sea Islands are Japan's lifeline, as the old Japanese naval slogan put it. When Japan invaded China in July 1937, the nation made a decisive break with the West. Beleaguered and alone, Japan called on its empire to close ranks and dedicate itself more than ever to mutual co-prosperity. The goal of the Micronesian Mandate would be to contribute what it could to the welfare of the Japanese Empire. Micronesians were swept up into the vortex of these events. They began each workday singing Kimagayo, the Japanese national anthem. Before their classes, school children bowed to the imperial palace in Tokyo and recited the oath to the emperor. I will be a a good Japanese citizen. Chingomoni waga koso koso kuni. That this is in to the emperor. Chingomoni waga koso koso kuni wahajimuru koto koen ni to kota zuku to zuru koko shinko na ni waga shinmin yoku chiu ni yoku koni kokoro itsu ni shite yoyobi yo naseru wa koyu waka. The Shinto religion, embodying the national ideals of Japan, became a focal point of the nationalism that was washing over the mandate. In late 1940, 
a new Shinto shrine was dedicated in Karur. This was a very high-ranking shrine. So, in a sense, it, it uh, illustrates a burst of nationalism. This, these are our islands. But even as the rites were being conducted, the clouds of war were gathering. There was dark talk that Japan had begun fortifying the islands and rumors of a submarine base being built on Saipan. Micronesia was preparing to enter a new and terribly stormy period in its history. Oh, 